everybody, it's Vanessa here again, motivational speaker and head coach at Live Love Give, and I am excited as always to share this message with you. And today, it's a really powerful message that I've been learning about again in that Robert Holden book about lovability, and it is, it's the love you feel inside yourself that helps you to know if the love that you have with somebody else is real or not. And I get many, many questions from those of you out there who are unsure about your relationships. You know, you might feel like, hey, is this all there is? Is this the person for me? And you're starting to question that and you're starting to recognize, um, you know, or tap into some questions as to whether or not you want to stay or you want to leave or, you know, whether this relationship is serving you on your journey of personal growth or maybe you need to go your separate ways. And thanks so much for joining me, Alex and Jay and Niel and Jonathan. Um, awesome, awesome to have you guys. And um, yeah, because again, it's such a powerful message and one that, you know, I'm constantly reminding myself of is, you know, ultimately it's that relationship that we have with ourselves that determines the extent of love that we can experience with another human being. And um, particularly, I'm talking really into intimate relationships. I'm not necessarily referring to our family relationships for this video. This one, I really want to talk into those love relationships, those intimate relationships that we build with other people. Nice to have you, Daniel and Judy and Nadai, Nadia sorry, and Shane. Awesome to see you again. And guys, you know, I'm really talking into, you know, that relationship with self and I'm talking a little bit into the law of attraction, but you know, a lot of people think, um, you know, law of attraction is all about positive thinking and, and all of that stuff. And it is, but it's also to do with the kind of people that we attract into our loving relationships. And so ultimately how we feel about ourselves within determines what we attract into our lives. So if we as an individual, if we, you know, own that we are lovable, that we are, you know, um, worthy of love, valuable human beings, and we're not putting ourselves in a pit or on a pedestal, and that's when we actually um, start to attract truly loving relationships, you know, because that's what we relate to. We relate to that, that love, that realness, because we can recognize and see our own lovability. But on the flip side of that, if we don't feel that we are truly lovable, you know, we attract something that isn't actually love. And, you know, that's because that's what we relate to. So I hope this is making sense to you guys. Hit me with any questions or feedback or clarification. Nice to have you here, Brian. Um, yeah, thanks for saying, hey, Shane, awesome always to see you here. And yeah, I really hope that this message is resonating with you guys out there because so many of us are in these relationships and we're missing love. You know, we're missing what the truth of love really is. We get in these relationships and they're just really giving to get and we're trying to get something from the other person to prove that we're lovable and we're on this constant roller, roller coaster of highs and lows and, you know, it it's gets so emotionally draining and life draining. And the reason why I love talking into relationships so much is because if you really think about it, you know, when things are going amazingly well in your relationship, like how good is life? Like you can handle everything, you know, um, it works better. You know, somebody cuts you off on the highway. It doesn't matter so much because you're so happy. You're so high on love. And on the flip side of that, you know, when things aren't going so well in your relationship, where you're having these big fights, you're feeling emotionally drained, you're doubting yourself, you're feeling insecure, whatever it is, you know, everything in life just gets to you, you know? And let me know if you had that experience. Nice to have you back, Eric. I love having you here. And um, Sabri, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate that. And Maritesh, nice to have you back again. I hope that this message is resonating with you guys. And I hope that it's making sense. And I'm hoping that you're going to, you know, look at your current relationship. Or if you're not currently in a relationship, there's so much power in reflecting back to your past relationships and seeing what went wrong. You know, seeing, oh, okay, I can recognize that hey, maybe we weren't really experiencing the depth of love there. Maybe it was more about 
because we were feeling unlovable within ourselves, we weren't really valuing and loving ourselves as individuals. Maybe we never got there. Maybe that's why there was so much pain. Maybe that's why we were constantly battling and fighting and there was power struggles. And, you know, what can I learn from that? And what my message to you guys today is, what you can learn is that if you want an extraordinary quality of relationship, one that is full of love and real depth, then you've got to create that within yourself. You've got to work on knowing that you are a beautiful human being inside and out, and you've got to work on developing that belief in your worthiness and um, tapping into that. Because if you don't have that as a foundation, you're constantly looking to the external world. You're constantly trying to get somebody else to prove that you're lovable. If they give you that compliment, if they you know, acknowledge you, if they show appreciation, um, those are all great things. But if you are relying solely on those external forces that you cannot control to ensure that you feel lovable and it's only going to be for that moment until that's worn off and you need your next hit of that love, that feeling of being worthy, that feeling of being lovable and valuable, then you're going to go throughout your life. You're going to transform to, to new relationship, new relationship, until you start seeing that the common denominator is your relationship with yourself. And when you finally learn that lesson and you're able to build the courage and have the confidence to look at yourself, take full ownership and 100% responsibility for the results that you've shared in your relationships, that is when you open yourself up to experiencing and building that foundation to create a sturdy, loving, truly loving and deep relationship with another human being. And you'll attract that kind of person. So the people that you know you may have attracted in your past who you didn't create great relationships with and they were really give to get and they were really, you know, you're always holding back and you weren't fully expressing yourself or being who you are and trusting them and trusting yourself. So you will, you won't attract people on that level anymore. You'll up level and you'll be amazed by the kind of people who start entering your life. So I'll just check in with the comments here. Um, awesome to see you, Jeremy. Thanks so much for joining. Tend to be more of a giver. What's your advice on learning how to receive to have a healthy balance of giving and receiving? Oh, I'm so glad you joined because that is such an awesome question. And that is that tends to happen a lot in these relationships where we're not fully focused. We're attracting the wrong kind of person, the kind of person who, you know, we attract our reciprocal in terms of their relationship with self. So Jeremy, when we are either over, when we're over giving, it's like, it, you need to take a look back at your relationship with self and ask yourself, why do I feel like I need to overcompensate here? Why is it? And, and people who are overgivers tend to be putting the other person on a pedestal and putting themselves in a pit. And like I've mentioned in a previous Facebook Live um, few, uh, last week, I think, in terms of love, it can only exist between equals. You can't experience love. You, you are robbing yourself of the experience of love and that person you're in relationship with when you are, you are not seeing the equality between the two of you. When you are putting somebody else on that pedestal and assuming you're so lucky to have this person love you and what, you're so lucky to have them in your life or, um, and that makes you become an overgiver, overcompensating because you, you're trying so hard to keep this person in your life because maybe one day they might realize that you're not worthy, you're not good enough because you're not believing within yourself that you're good enough. And on the flip side of that, you know, when we're putting a partner in the pit, and we're expecting them to give to us and we're we're you know we're not giving back we're we're on the other side we're like open to receive you better give me you know you better give to me and you know when we do that we're again blocking ourselves so recognize are you in in a relationship right now or reflect back to a past relationship and ask yourself was I putting them in a, in a pit or on a pedestal? Was I trying to overcompensate and give, give, give? Or, and not, and, and that again, I just want to make another point here, blocks you from receiving. And, you know, in a truly loving relationship, you both want to 
out give to each other but you've got to know how to receive and so many of us out there are beautiful human beings with best intentions who just want to give they just want to show so much of their love but they block themselves from being able to receive and you know that love is never one-sided love is never one way you have to both give and receive be open to receive and you know, never rob somebody of the opportunity to have the pleasure of giving to you. You know, um, a, a funny little story here, um, a friend, a girlfriend of mine, whenever we go out and catch up and go out for breakfast or lunch or whatever we're doing, we always have a fight over who's going to pay and we have to get really sneaky with one another. But we always use the funny joke, are you going to rob me of the pleasure of paying for this experience? And, and you know, and we just take it in turns and it's fun, you know, and that that's real love. That's real connection where you just, you want to give, but you, you can also receive. And, you know, a lot of people who tend to overgive notice whether you get resentful about that as well. So, you know, so many of us, we get caught in this mindset and we think we're, we're so giving and we're so, you know, just give, 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 but make sure that you're not um, giving to get, right? So if you're noticing that you're getting really resentful because you're feeling like you're the one who's always giving, 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 um, take a step back, open yourself up to receive, give that person an opportunity to give to you as well. And um, if you notice that you're yeah, getting that resentment, you're damaging the relationship. So I would work on the receiving aspect there. I hope that that has helped, Jeremy. Um, thank you so much for that question. And uh, let me just quickly scroll back here because I missed a few comments yesterday and just want to make sure that I can get them. Uh, wherever, where are we? Jeremy, yes, Jen, this is key. Worthiness has been something I've struggled with in the past, seen the changes in my life. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Jen. I'm so grateful to hear that you've been on that journey, you know, that journey of self-love. And some of us think, you know, like, oh, I don't want to love myself. Like, uh, particularly in Australia, you know, we have this thing called tall poppy syndrome. And you probably have your version of it wherever you are in the world. And tall poppy syndrome is... You know, when people get too what we call full of themselves, too in love with themselves, we're going to chop them down. So in Australia, you know, it's kind of like a bit of an icky thing to talk about. Love yourself like, oh, all right, mate, like you're, <laughs> you're a bit in love with yourself there and you open yourself to get chopped down. And um, so it can be some, a hurdle for some people to get over, to build that love and that relationship with self. But um, yeah, it's just an interesting topic. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you're on that path, Jen. Um, that is awesome that you're experiencing those changes in your life. And Eric, yes, learn to love yourself before you love someone else. That's so true. Yes. And another little point I want to make here, thank you for bringing that up, Eric, is that Yes. Okay. I don't, I, I think that yes, you have to work on that foundational relationship with yourself, but you don't have to do it beforehand. You don't have to necessarily have this perfect idealistic relationship with yourself before you can start creating a relationship with another person. In actual fact, you want to get there faster. You incorporate another human being into that equation with you and make sure that you know, they are, they are somebody who you have set the intention with that you're on this journey together of self-love and building an extraordinary relationship with somebody else. And, you know, that so that they can, uh, you can both support and challenge the best out of each other. So, yes, yeah, so many people get trapped because they, they're too scared to re-enter into a relationship because they've been hurt. And now they're like, oh, I've got to focus on my relationship with self. And until that's perfect... I'm not going to open myself up and be willing to create a relationship with somebody else. And my advice to you there is just ch check in with yourself and notice whether that um, desire is coming from fear or it's coming from love for yourself. If you know that you need some time to yourself to just focus on you, awesome. But, um, you know, and if you know that, you you know, you, you, you're actually just holding yourself back and it's kind of that perfectionistic um, trying to protect yourself and, and have an excuse to not be open to love, I challenge you to just challenge yourself on that and think about that as well. So thanks for that comment, Eric. That's awesome. Awesome to have you here, Vo and mine. Thank you so much for joining and Dean. And um, oh, so sorry, I don't know if I'll be able to say your name right, but Mwambutsya. Um, 
Sorry if I got that totally wrong. Um, this is really true and I love you talking about it rightly. Thank you so much and thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for joining me. And um, Dean, grateful that this has been a good message for you. And uh, Maritesh, Maritesh um, hi, I don't regarding body language, how to improve body language. Tell any specialist name. I will watch YouTube video. Okay, I'll send you a message afterwards about that. Maritesh. Um, actually, I, um, there's a great Aussie guy by the name of Alan Pease. Um, he and his wife Barbara Pease are actually um, Aussie couple, written many books, talk into relationships, but he is a body language expert. So I'll send you a link um, on your comment after this advice. Uh, after this video, sorry, I was just reading Jeremy's um, comment there. Thanks so much, Jeremy. I'm so grateful that that's been valuable to you. And Anne, you're the reason why I jumped on this Facebook Live early today, testing it out. Thank you so much for joining. If you begin a relationship with someone before you are ready, is it possible that the two of you may diverge on paths throughout through your growth? Wow, 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 wow. This is exactly why I get on these um, on these lives and want you on there and because I love your questions and my real belief is that alignment is so key in any relationship you know alignment is pretty much 90% of the 95% I'd say of the success of your relationship is whether or not you're in alignment and so what I would say in terms of alignment you've got to know the most important thing to have aligned with another person is your values. If you if your values are in alignment, you have such a great chance of creating such a successful relationship. But if your values are really opposite and opposing, you're going to have troubles, okay? Um, but you can make it work, but uh, it takes a lot more work and you have to learn to understand and be able to communicate in each other's values. But you're saying, and here, in terms of um, if you diverge on paths, different paths on your growth. So if you begin a relationship with someone before you're ready, is it possible the two of you may diverge your paths? I think that there's never a time that you're ready or you're not ready totally. I think that I think that you can give things a go and if it is, you know, I, I would say to you, be conscious about who you're selecting to be in a relationship with in terms of are your values aligned. That is a really great foundational piece to work with. But I really believe that alignment is something that um, you have to constantly work on. So you have to have check-in points throughout your relationship to ensure that you're still on the same path, that you're still in alignment, and it's a conscious choice. You choose whether or not you're going to remain in alignment or not. And those different, um, maybe you go on these different paths of growth like you're talking about there, Anne, and I really believe that we don't all grow in the same ways. And it's a big obstacle for some people when they don't understand that and they put their version of growth, their model of growth onto the other person and expect them to be like them. When in actual fact, you don't want that. You know, in relationships, we often try and force the other person to be just like us. But you know, at the end of the day, if there's two of you, one of you isn't necessary, is it? So we need to honor those differences, appreciate those differences, encourage those different ways that we grow. But what I would say is that alignment of values and um, where ultimately where you're heading, the direction that you want to go, you know, you need to you need to make sure that you have a conscious effort to work towards those. And um, and see how it see how it plays out. You know there can be struggles if one of you wants to travel for the rest of your life and the other person you know wants to settle down with a family and have a white picket fence and you know those sort of things can be really challenging, particularly if they're really strong desires that the two of you have. Um, I don't believe in compromise, and it might be controversial to you guys, but. I don't think that anybody should compromise what they truly want, what the, who they really are, what they really want. And But I do feel like there are ways around that to um, make sure that you are in alignment if you can sort of integrate those things that you want. So I hope that that's been helpful. I hope I didn't just go off on a big tangent there for you, Anne. And um, let me know if you have any questions, comments. And um, Eric, okay, so how can I see... 
that from a woman haha <laughs> I'm so independent and ignorant sometimes so um, I'm guessing that you mean there Eric how can you see the woman's perspective um, let me know if that's what you mean um, and I'd love to help you out with that um, and we're all a bit independent and ignorant at times so don't worry about that <laughs> And uh, are you welcome, Anne, always. And Louis, thank you for joining. And Yvette, what about people that change their values to fit with their partner? Definitely possible. And I'm not saying it, it's easy. Um, Dr. John D. Martini, phenomenal guy. If you haven't checked out his stuff, make sure that you jump on it. And he does talk into helping people change their value system because he uses a great example in terms of people wanting financial freedom. Most people, if you asked a, a crowd of people who in here wants financial freedom, you'll see 99.9% .9 of the hands go up in the room. But why is it that only 1% of the population have that financial freedom? And ultimately, he talks into the idea that you don't value financial freedom because if you did you know then you would have it so you've got all these other values stacked on top of this financial freedom that you supposedly want and it's the same in terms of relationships so a lot of people if those values aren't aligned but you're determined to make a successful aligned compelling relationship then you can look at the value systems that you each have and you definitely can make those shifts but you've got to have enough reasons why so i hope that's been helpful yvette let me know any more comments and and what values do you mean okay so in terms of values what i really mean is that each and every one of us we have a set of values whether you're conscious of them or not and they are what we what we do in our everyday life you know we nobody has to motivate us remind us to live in our values so if you haven't already done a little bit of work with your values then i would actually challenge you i'll drop a link and to dr john d martini's website he has a free um, values determination process which is awesome and um, yeah I challenge you to check that out and see what comes up for you it's not an easy process to identify those values particularly if you've never done it before so I'll drop a link for that for anybody who wants to check out that and start that journey of uncovering their values so hope that was helpful too and because I'll give you a quick example actually so say that one of you um, has a value of um, what should I say here? What should I say? Yeah, well, I guess just a simple, easy, really simple one that everybody can get right now if you haven't done any work on your values is um, the travel piece that I mentioned before. So say one of you is just so pumped and um, exhilarated by travel and you've got this picture in your mind that you are going to travel the world, live the laptop lifestyle, and um, and you want to have children that you sort of travel around the world with and they get to experience cultures. And the other person in the relationship is very traditional. You know, they want to live in the same place that their parents grew up in, that they've got family support all around them. They want to stay where they know. And, you know, those two people, one of them, if that's a really strong value of theirs, then one of them is going to have to compromise, right? Well, like I said, I don't really believe in that compromise. But if you can shift and start to value what the other person values and truthfully make that shift, then you can make that work. Hope that was valuable. Awesome, my friend Therene, thank you so much for joining. And uh, Jen, I'm glad that that was great for you. And um, okay, and yes, yep values is so huge like you can you can make the you know some people get stuck they think it's um just a, it has to be a single word or it has to be you know a, a trait that you're valuing or it has to be you know a thing that you do that you value but ultimately this is why values can be kind of challenging for people to get their head around because it's absolutely anything it's identifying what's most important to you and you'll notice that it's most people will say well i value my family okay but 
when was the last time you spent time with your family? Oh, back at Christmas? Okay, it's not a top value of yours. It's an idealistic value that you think you should have, but ultimately your values show up for you in your everyday life. You do these every day. Nobody reminds you to do it. It just happens. So that's why if you get onto the link that I'll drop for you, Dr. John D. Martini Values Determination Test, um, it's a really good way to just sort of see what's, uncover that for yourself. Awesome, Robbie, thank you so much. I'm gr grateful that this has been great for you. And Mick, nice to have you back. And Anne, I see, well, thank you. Yes, I understand that now. I wanted to travel and my ex-husband told me to look at pictures in a book. I'm glad he's your ex, awesome. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Anne. Um, I hope that you know your new partner is, you've got more alignment. And my, my experience has been is that the more experience we have in relationships, they can get better and better and better. If you're somebody with a growth mindset, which I know all of you who are listening are, you take those lessons, you learn more about who you are, what you want and what you don't want, and you take those lessons into a next relationship. So always live in abundance. You know, so many people trap themselves in scarcity in their relationships and they stay in relationships that aren't serving them and they aren't serving the other person all because they're worried about their future. They're living in scarcity. What if I don't find another person who loves me or, you know, what if it's not, not as good and people get so scared of the unknown. So I challenge you to live with abundance, to to trust yourself enough to know that you will learn the lessons and it's only going to get better. So awesome. Thank you so much, Yvette and Eric. Yeah, Vanessa, sometimes women give me interest, but I can't or don't uh, know how to see the sign they could send me. Yep. Okay, Eric. So what I would say to that is that women are very indirect and um, that's our nature. You know, we... Um, we, I think it's called, uh, it's been referred to as dropping the handkerchief. It's, um, I think, a 1950s term or something like that. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But, um, you know, the dropping of the handkerchief is when we, as women, are interested in somebody, we're not, we're not direct about it. Not when we're in our feminine energy, you know, we're, we're kind of indirect about it. But, um, you know, you've got to learn the language of women, which is we're so different to men. You know, if we're interested in a man and we are, um, you know, naturally in our essence, in our feminine, feminine energy, um, then that feminine energy is all about openness. So we become more open to you um, and, you know, sort of give you little hints. Um, but you've got to learn our language and know that we're not men. When men um, are interested or they're in their masculine energy, if somebody's in their masculine energy and that's their natural sense and their natural essence, then they're more direct about it. They're, they're going to come up to you. They're going to communicate with you. And you kind of know more where you stand that way. But um, yeah, I hope that that's sort of uh, a little bit helpful to you. Women aren't easy. Sometimes men aren't e either. Um, but um, yeah, I would say that I'd need to have a little bit more of a conversation with you if you really wanted to know in the specifics about a woman that you're communicating with. But definitely let me know. I hope that that's been valuable, guys. Um, I, I love this topic. I love it so much. I love chatting with you guys. I'm grateful that you're finding these messages of value. Um, that lights me up more than anything. And um, yeah, I hope that today's message has resonated with you. You know, again, it's the love that you feel inside of yourself that helps you to know if the love that you have with someone else is real or not. So really take Take that step into your relationship with self. And, and just on that, Eric, I think the more confident that you become within yourself and the more you trust within your own lovability, um, you'll start to sort of see the clarification and you'll start to attract those people that you, you know you're attracting people who are you know interested in you. Um, so I hope that that's helpful. And um, Meritesh, yes. Yes, you have registered. I can't wait to meet you. I think our session is next week. So we'll jump on that call and um, I'll, I'll make sure that that happens with us. That'll be awesome. All right, guys. Um, I hope that that has been valuable to you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. I've appreciated your, your comments, your questions. Um, yeah, awesome, Eric. Glad that that's helpful. Um, yes, awesome. And and thank you so much. I appreciate that this has been valuable to you. 
and um, I love you guys so much. I'm, I'm, I'm just pumped every day when I get to jump on these Facebook Lives. So if you have any questions, if any sort of topics are of, of top of mind for you guys that you'd love for me to talk into um, and send me your questions, awesome, because then I will um, touch on them in an, an upcoming Facebook Live. I'm committed to doing these every day. So yeah, if I want to make it def it's all about you guys, you know, I want to add value to you guys. So let me know what's valuable to you so I can make that happen. Awesome, Jen. Thank you so much. And Eric and Jamie, um, thank you so much for joining. And I appreciate you all so much. And I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. I hope you can join me. All right.